the rule of Thomas. I created this rule to help me convert hemoglobin A1C to average blood glucose. And I use this for my patients with diabetes or prediabetes to help them understand at what average blood sugar they're typically at. So to start out, hemoglobin A1C is a percentage. In the medical field, we use this to measure a patient's blood sugar control over the last 90 days. Um, red blood cells are tagged with glucose, and we measure these red blood cells, and we see how much glucose is attached to them. It gives us, it gives us this hemoglobin A1C level. Now, this hemoglobin A1C correlates to an average blood glucose that's expressed as in milligrams per deciliter. So, for example, a hemoglobin A1C of 6% correlates to an average blood glucose of 126. It's difficult for patients to understand this, and some associations and societies have developed their own models, formulas, and tables to help patients understand this and help doctors communicate the conversion of hemoglobin A1C to average blood glucose. So the American Diabetes Association came up with um, a formula for translating the A1C assay into estimated average glucose levels. Now their formula is as follows. Average glucose in milligrams per deciliter equals 28.7 times A1C minus 46.7. So you have to remember your order of operations here, 28.7 times A1C, and then you subtract the 46.7. I find this formula to be a little bit cumbersome. You can find the full article at the link below. So I tried to develop my own formula that would kind of closely approximate these hemoglobin A1C levels here in the left column to the estimated average blood sugar levels here in the right column. So this is from the Mayo Clinic, and they put out this um, chart to help us with our patient explanations of hemoglobin A1C to average blood sugar levels. There's a similar one from the American Diabetes Association. Here the hemoglobin A1C is expressed as a percentage and it correlates to the estimated average glucose in milligrams per deciliter. Like I said before, hemoglobin A1C of 6% is roughly 126 milligrams per deciliter. So I created the rule of Thomas. So the average blood glucose in milligrams per deciliter equals 120 plus 30 times the hemoglobin A1C minus 6%. So remember the order of operations here. You start with your hemoglobin A1C, you subtract 6%, multiply by 30, and then add 120. And this 120 is kind of like a baseline blood sugar. All right, so for example, you have a 30-year-old male with well-controlled type 1 diabetes and a hemoglobin A1C of 7%. Their average blood glucose is going to equal 120 plus 30 times 7 minus 6. So 7 minus 6 is 1 times 30 equals 30 plus 120 gives you an average blood glucose of 150 milligrams per deciliter. If you compare that to what the Mayo Clinic put out, uh, hemoglobin A1C of 7% correlates to an estimated average blood sugar level of 154 milligrams per deciliter. So with the rule of Thomas, we're relatively close. Also, from the American Diabetes Association, hemoglobin A1C of 7 also correlates to an estimated average glucose of 154. Now for a 58-year-old male with new onset type 2 diabetes who has not received any medications, they present for care, and um, his hemoglobin A1C is found to be 12%. So using the formula, we put 12%, subtract 6, we end up with 6, we multiply by 30, gives us 180, and then we add to 120. You come out with an average blood glucose of 300 milligrams per deciliter. Now looking at the chart from the Mayo Clinic, 12% is 298 milligrams per deciliter. And that's about what we received in our formula from the rule of Thomas. Let's give one final example. An 80-year-old female with type 2 diabetes who is taking metformin 500 milligrams twice a day has a hemoglobin A1C of 9%. Using the formula, 9 minus 6 is 3, times 30 is 90, plus 
120 is 210. So her average blood glucose using the rule of Thomas for hemoglobin A1C, 9% is 210. So comparing that to the American Diabetes Association um, chart that they released, the hemoglobin A1C of 9 correlates to an estimated average glucose of 212. And using the rule of Thomas, we found the estimated average glucose to be 210. So we're two points off. So in summary, the rule of Thomas offers a dynamic and simple conversion of hemoglobin A1c to an estimated average blood glucose. It's easy to use for clinicians and allows for quick calculations in the clinic and in the hospital. And it provides a close approximation of average blood glucose from hemoglobin A1c. I hope you use the rule of Thomas in managing your patients with type 1 and type 2 diabetes. And I hope it helps you optimize their care. Thank you.